What's up guys and welcome back to the Concrete Edge right here on Deco Creek TV. My name's Jeff and on today's show we're going to be taking a look at a new twist on a classic stamp concrete pattern and what makes this Ashler stamps different from the rest so stay tuned and you're going to learn all about it. So we're going to start today's video off with a question. What is the first set of concrete stamps that you ever used? Uh, now, I am serious about this, so please let us know down in the comments. And honestly, I just can't wait to hear uh, everyone's answers. So for me, the first uh, kind of concrete stamps that I used was actually just a seamless texture scan, and that doesn't really count. So uh, the first actual grout line stamp I used was an Ashler pattern. And at that time, that little two foot Ashler was just the most popular pattern out there. And if you stamp, started stamping concrete, you know, around that same time, you probably we love that little pattern as much as I do. I mean, oh yeah, we've all got fond memories of that one. Now, the good news is that things have come a long way since then. I mean, not only in the amount of Ashler patterns to choose from, but also the technology of the stamping tool itself. I mean, these days stamps are just thinner, lighter, more forgiving, they hold your weight better. I mean, not to mention that the fact that over the last 20 years, manufacturers have just come out with a lot more patterns. I mean, it's just kind of how things work. You give people time and innovation will happen. One thing does remain the same, however, is that Ashler patterns are still one of the most popular. I mean, I think it's safe to say that the Ashler Ashler layout is a classic stamp concrete pattern. And for like stone masonry work, I mean, Ashler patterns of date all the way back to the 12th century, or at least that's what Google told me. And I mean, if it's on the internet, it's gotta be true, right? So what makes these Ashler stamps different from the rest? I mean, first of all, we're gonna start out with what's on the back of the stamps. So DecoCrete decided to start putting these little lines on the back of all their grout line stamps. And the lines are exactly that. They are a mirror image of the grout lines that the stamp will create. So now you don't have to guess where they're at. I mean, if you've ever stamped concrete before, I mean, you probably know how helpful this is. I mean, I used to take a Sharpie and make little marks on the back of certain stamps like brick, cobblestone, or even uh, certain wood plank patterns. I mean, just to make it easier to get the first couple rows started. Now, these marks did work, uh, but they didn't last very long. We we're constantly, um, you know, redoing them. And once enough release got built up on them, I mean, they were just really hard to see anyways. Now, these lines, on the other hand, I mean, they are not going to wear off and they are easy to see even if you use powder release. I mean, one of the mistakes that people make with grout line stamps is not getting those grout lines pushed all the way down. And this leads to bare spots in the texture. I mean, especially right around the grout lines. And this just sticks out like a sore thumb and there's really no fix for it. Now, having the lines marked on the back will also help you out if you have a job that requires multiple pours on the same slab. I mean, if you've ever done this before, then you know how hard it can be to find the right stamp uh, to get started on the next section. I mean, you can see all the grout lines from the pour before, but uh, to keep going, now you got to keep flipping the stamp over just to make sure that you have the right one and to make sure you have it turned the right direction. Well, these lines just take all that guesswork out of it. And uh, for a few other tips on this, uh, please check out our Technique of the Week video where Jason goes over the entire process. So this next part is not exclusive to just these stamps, but Avalon Ashler is a rotating pattern. I mean, remember that little two foot Ashler pattern we were talking about earlier? I mean, one of the biggest problems with it was that you could see every spot where the stamp got placed. I mean, there's only one way to turn the stamp and it just wasn't very random. Now with a rotating pattern on the other hand, you can turn the stamp so they don't end up with the same stones in the same spot every single time. I mean, this will make the pattern more random, but this style of Ashler pattern also just helps hide the pathway of that stamps better than the traditional L-shaped Ashlers do. I mean, it really doesn't matter which way you turn this thing, it's still gonna fit together and you can use this little logo on the back uh, just to keep track of it. Now, one little bonus tip here before we move on, and I mean, this goes for pretty much any grout line stamp that I know of, and the tip is don't use the handles. Now, <laughs> I know, I know. If you're not supposed to use the handles, why do you even put them on there in the first place? So let me explain, or maybe even uh, rephrase that a little bit. Use the handles to break the suction, but not to pick them up. Now, the problem is when you use the handles to pick the stamps up, I mean, it's just really hard to not end up having a few spots dragging across the concrete. So once the stamp is freed up from that suction that gets created by pounding it into the concrete, I mean, I just prefer to pick the stamps up all the way out on the edges. Now, if you do just have to use the handles, I mean, just try and hold them so that the pressure is all towards the middle. And that way you can just make a big taco out of the stamp, have as few spots touching as possible, and then just pick it straight up. So the last thing to cover here is the texture. And I mean, this is really what makes the biggest difference to the end user. Now, there are different layouts of Ashler patterns and how the stamps work is definitely very, very important to the contractor. But 
once it's all said and done, I mean, the most noticeable difference is gonna be the texture. Now, this exotic looking texture of Avalon Ashler was imported from India, and I don't think that I've really ever seen anything else like it. Now, the texture also runs different directions on the stones, so it doesn't just look like a seamless texture that had grout lines cut into it. And the variety of the stones just make it perfect for pretty much any uh, project, large or small. The set has three different stamps that are color coded for easy identification and each of them has its own unique uh, grout line pattern. And if you rotate the stamps as you go, uh, you're just gonna create the most random Ashler pattern possible. Now the stamping tools themselves are 42 by 42, so you can cover a lot of ground and they'll work on freshly pressed concrete or concrete overlays. All in all, Avalon Asher gives a new twist to an old pattern that's still really popular and the stamps themselves are as up to date as you can get. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this week's show. Uh, if you guys have any questions on these or any other DecoCrete stamps, please leave us a comment or even better yet, give us or your nearest DecoCrete distributor a call. And thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I mean, we really, really do appreciate all the support that you guys show to the channel every week by tuning in and just hitting those couple little buttons down there. It's free of charge, like, subscribe, um, and share. Uh, so from all of us here at DecoCrete TV, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.